everyone and welcome! This week we are continuing on in our series of Every World is a Tiny Home. This is episode number three, which brings us to Brindleton Bay. In our last episode, I asked you guys what your favorite world in The Sims 4 is, and I got a lot of responses of Brindleton Bay. And I totally understand why you've picked this world as your favorite. One, it is beautiful, and two, this is actually a big world. There's a lot of lots, and it just feels big and complete. It was hard for me to pick a specific style for this world. I had to think about it for a little bit, and in the end, I chose to do a Dutch colonial. I really feel like this style fits really well with this world. I had another style picked out, and I was going to do a tier 2 tiny home, but then I realized we needed to represent cats and dogs in this build, so scrap that. And this is a tier 3, so this will fit up to 3 sims and either 2 cats, 2 dogs, a cat and a dog, or if you want one crazy cat lady with 7 cats, go for it. <laughs> but yeah, this has 2 bedrooms and 1 full bathroom, and it's got a really nice front and backyard. This is a 20 by 30 lot. I'm not a huge fan of these really long narrow ones, but this worked out really, really well for this home. So enough about the home. If you saw our previous episode last week, well I shouldn't say episode, our previous speed build last week, you know I was talking about my vacation that I just went on <laughs> and I said I would continue that this week. Last week was all the craziness and all the chaos and this week is like actually getting to the trip. So if you didn't see the episode last week, we were going out to Colorado to do a really big backpacking trip so it was a loop that was ended up being 52 miles and it took five days, four nights. We were trying to do it in one last day, but it was insanely intense. It was amazing, but really intense. So the first day, of course, was the easiest. And I think that's because usually everyone has more energy the first day. And I feel like it, I don't know, it was a good climb up definitely and down. We encountered one saddle on that day. So a saddle is when you have two mountains and there's a ridge between them and basically that lowest point is what you're going up and over, which is really awesome. So once you get up to that saddle, you're able to see like the valley behind you, the valley in front of you. It's almost like two different worlds. It is just, it is spectacular, beautiful. So that was day one. So we went up and over one saddle and went down for a long time, came kind of back up into like the tree line and stayed at a really, really pretty lake, which we ended up having all to ourselves, which is insane. We did have to share it with the deer. There was a decent amount of deer there. That was just awesome, awesome. And then we had like one last kind of crazy funny thing happen. <laughs> So when we were setting up our tent, like very quickly into setting up the tent, I hear a huge tear. And yeah, my husband ripped his pants, which were the only pants that he brought on this trip. <laughs> I brought two pants, but he was trying to save weight and only brought one pair. Thankfully, he brought underwear. <laughs> we had no way of repairing these pants, so he had to continue to wear them the whole rest of the trip and then by the time we actually ended up getting out and going to a hotel afterwards, I told him like, you're gonna have to put your rain pants on because you can't go to the hotel like that. <laughs> yeah, so that was like the crazy thing that happened on that day. Day two was insanely intense. We did not get as far as we would have liked on that day. So what ended up happening on that day is we had to do, we had to go up and over two saddles, which is already like, that's a lot. And I'd say at least a third of the trail was completely covered in rocks. There had been like tons of rock slides and it's like you could see where the trail was supposed to be, but the trail was gone. So we had to climb up and over these rocks. And I think at points for very long points, <laughs> we were probably going like a half a mile an hour, like half a mile an hour. It was really, really slow. That was hours of that. So it's like, you have to go slow because one, you don't want to twist your ankle with all the weight on your back. Two, you don't want to trip and fall. 
and fall off the edge. So <laughs> that was very time consuming on top of thinking that like, it was just a little bit demoralizing, I think, that thinking we had already like got to the top and we were done and gonna be going down and realizing like, oh no, we have to go up again. That was intense. So yeah, we didn't make it as far. We ended up having to like quick find a place as it was getting dark, which is never fun. But we found the, this beautiful grove of pine trees that was like just past the next trailhead and set up our tent there. And it was, it was really nice. Although that night something came through our tent site area, which freaked me out. It's like, we both think it was an elk, but yeah, it was, it was loud. That was a little bit scary. <laughs> so I had to put earplugs in that night. Otherwise I'm like, I'm not getting any sleep. <laughs> so then by the third day we had to make up some time. We went by two lakes up in the mountains, which were just absolutely gorgeous. So we got up past the first one. I think we didn't have lunch there. We had a snack and then you kind of go down and we got to this area where it's like we hadn't had water for miles and thankfully there was like a little pond up there. We refilled our water and then saw where we were going next and it was a ton of switchbacks that went way up and I asked my husband at one point I'm like are we going up there? Yeah, like, oh my gosh, it was a huge climb. So that was actually like the highest point we climbed in the entire trip. But also it's like, on top of this being like a super intense climb, I also had like seen clouds coming in. My husband asked about them before. I'm like, nah, we're good. And then later on in the day, I'm like, it's probably gonna rain on us. Like we need to get up and over this saddle, like ASAP because like, I don't want to get up there and be stuck in a thunderstorm, which is very bad. But also it's like, even if it's just raining, it is so windy up there that it's, it's not nice. So yes, we made it up there. We had time to like quick take some pictures and then we quick like went down all the switchbacks down and we got into like the valley area and it started raining. And then there's people behind us and I'm like, yep, this is why I wanted to like go fast because I didn't want to be up there when it was raining so we got our rain gear on and like the whole rest of the day was rainy which just was like a bummer we get to like the next lake area which is a huge lake it's a very popular lake another trail intersects there so there's a lot of people there but we got to a point where I was all of a sudden like uh like the trail was completely gone completely like taken out by a rock slide and I am just I I didn't know what to do. Like I was kind of looking at the area where it's like the trail might have been and I'm I'm like uh how are we gonna do this? It looked like it was just a straight drop off from there. I'm like how are we gonna do this? It is raining, it is slippery and wet. And like as we're like trying to like figure this out, all of a sudden someone shows up behind us and is like, oh, hey. <laughs> so it was this uh, younger guy. He was there with his parents and he got up ahead of them. And we were, he's like, oh, have you been here before? No, he hadn't, he hadn't been there before. And it didn't take super long. And he actually saw a trail marker, like a rock Karen. And was like, oh, the trail is up here. And it was up a little further up the rock slide. And when we got up there, I was looking at it. I'm like, oh, thank goodness like this is so much safer than like lower down because I was getting scared <laughs> but still not fun we had to go really slow across that thankfully we get through that like okay good the lake is busy it's like we're not staying here we're gonna keep on going so we kept going and th this was like the part where we didn't know where we were gonna set up tent because we hadn't done this part of the trail before We'd only done like the first 12 miles. So we have no idea what to expect. And for a long time, it's like, we're in this very narrow area going down where there's nowhere to camp. And finally we get down to like, there's a river and it's like, okay, good. We're gonna be able to probably find somewhere to camp really soon here. And then we get to another point where 
Well, if you want to find out what happens next, <laughs> you will have to join us again next week because we're getting towards the end of this video and we're going to have to start to wrap things up. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you enjoyed hearing some of our adventures. Make sure if you're not already subscribed, subscribe, hit that button, hit the like button and turn on notifications so you're notified when we release our next video. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here, all of you. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we hope you have an amazing week ahead of you. We will see you all next week, everyone. Bye! Dream.